our video today on Bite Ramps with Clear Aligner Therapy. In this video, we will understand what Bite Ramps are, their function, indications, and contraindications. To start off, what are Bite Ramps? Those are unfilled projections in the aligner surface itself placed on the palatal surface of the upper interior teeth. On the treatment setup, they will look just like attachments as indicated by the arrows. But unlike attachments, those do not need to be filled with composite. Therefore, they will not be found in the attachment template, but only on the actual aligner steps. The placement of bite ramps will serve two main functions. First is, disocclusion of posterior teeth. When the patient bites anteriorly with the aligners on, the posterior teeth will disocclude, removing any posterior bite forces and allowing more freedom of movement for posterior teeth as we will show later in this video. The second effect of bite ramps is actual intrusive forces on the anterior teeth. Each time the patient bites and hits the bite ramps, extra intrusive forces will be applied. With those two main functions, bite ramps will come in handy in the treatment of several cases or malocclusions. The most important of those are deep bite cases. To understand this better, let's go back and remember the biomechanics for deep bite correction. In most cases, treatment plan will include either extrusion of posterior teeth, intrusion of anterior teeth, or a combination of both. Now let's imagine that you are trying to extrude the posterior teeth with the presence of aligners. The biting forces on the aligners will work in the opposite direction and prevent extrusion. Therefore, the disocclusion caused by bite ramps will remove any posterior bite forces and allow a more predictable extrusion of posterior teeth. On the contrary, the biting forces applied on bite ramps will facilitate the needed intrusion of anterior teeth. Keep in mind that many cases of deep bite will have a very steep curve of speed with over erupted and possibly lingually tipped incisors. Therefore, a combination of proclination and intrusion of lower anterior teeth will help flatten the curve of speed reduce the overbite, and improve the inclination of lower incisors in a more predictable manner. Absolute intrusion is one of the most challenging movements to be achieved orthodontically. This is why combining proclination with intrusion will give us the relative intrusion effect and increase the predictability of movement. So whenever possible, Plan the intrusion of lower anterior teeth with some proclination. The other common occurrence with deep bite is the lingually tipped premolars and a deep curve of Wilson. Bite ramps will allow posterior teeth disocclusion and remove any bite forces, which will facilitate expansion and labial crown torque of premolars more predictability. But are bite ramps indicated for use in all deep bite cases? To answer this, let's look at this deep bite case here. This is a case of class 2 division 2 malocclusion with a deep bite and retroclined upper incisors. Plan will usually include labial crown torque with intrusion of upper incisors. To achieve labial crown torque, forces should be applied from the aligner on the palatal surface on incisors as indicated by the arrow. If bite ramps are placed on upper incisors, this will result in less plastic to be in contact with the incisor cingula, which reduces the surface area available for the desired labial crown torque. Thus in such cases, it is recommended to delay the placement of bite ramps until labial crown torque is achieved, or place the bite ramps on the upper canines only to increase the predictability of incisor tipping and relative intrusion. The other scenario that is worth discussing here is cases of deep bite with an increased over jet as shown here. Placement of bite ramps in this case will be of no value if the lower incisors are not in direct contact with the bite ramps and might even have a negative effect if lower incisors bite in a lingual position to bite ramps, impeding upper incisors retraction whenever planned. 
It's also important to know that the use of bite ramps is not exclusive for deep bite cases only, but there are a few other indications for their use, as their effect in unlocking the bite allows more freedom of movement for the posterior teeth and can be helpful in several cases such as Posterior expansion or crossbite correction. Disocclusion of the posterior teeth will facilitate the expansion movement and remove and interferences. This goes as well for cases where anterior posterior correction is planned, especially when distalization movement is being achieved for class to correction. Disocclusion created by bite ramps will allow more freedom and predictability of movement. With Eon cases, you can specify your preferences for bite ramps from the prescription tab as shown here. You can either choose Eon to recommend, where bite ramps will be added according to the needs of the case by Ian's treatment planning team. Or you can request to specifically add bite ramps on incisors or on incisors and canines. The note box here will allow you to add any special instructions such as the timing of bite ramps placement, or you can choose no and Ian's treatment planning team will avoid placement of bite ramps for that specific case. Thank you for watching.